Good morning and happy new year, meep. Welcome to 2020 and welcome everybody here back to Oxygen Not Included. In the last episode here, we set up this crazy thing where we are actually go ahead and we are refining metal, but we are using liquid aluminum or molten aluminum, whatever you want to call it here, to cool down the material that is running through here. So the input temperature right now is 1,300 and... 37 it is leaked input temperature and then the output temperature is much higher than that allowing us to do some pretty cool things so today we're going to be covering this idea where we can actually take salt melt it down into its liquid form and then once we phase change it into gas it will increase its specific heat capacity and therefore we get some bonus energy out of that we will then take the thermal energy out of the gas and run it into a steam turbine like we have over here with a bunch of steam tap into that and pull power from it so what this means is that we are going to get a nice big bonus of the from the energy that we're actually running through here so you can see right here the amount of heat that is output by this metal refinery when we run steel is 117 kilojoules. In a previous episode here, I figured out which one of these metal refineries are actually giving us a net gain. And as we can see here, steel and iron both give us a net gain, whereas wolframite, copper are kind of pretty much nothing, and then gold is actually run at a loss. So one good question here is what happens when we add a little bit of power to this because we're running through that salt phase change. So this is our theoretical chart here before it runs through the salt. You can see our largest number here is the net gain for steel at 596 and then the biggest net loss for gold at negative 247. After salt, we have a massive jump here for steel up to 828. However, gold does only mar marginally improve a little bit, costing us a little bit less at negative 224. So it still takes more power to, to run gold than we actually get out of it. However, there's some other equipment that's not being accounted for here as well, such as the valves and whatnot. So how am I going to set this up? Because it's really important to get the arrangement correct. All right, so the first thing I want to do here is run a lot of steel. So I think, matter of fact, I think I'm going to put forever on this steel right there, and then we're going to run forever on iron over here. The reason I want to have lots of steel on hand is because I have a lot of equipment that's going to be really, really hot, and therefore I need steel. And there's really not a lot of reason to run it through all of this stuff over here, so we're just going to disable this for now, and pretty soon we'll phase this out completely. Thank you, Meep. Good job working on that. I'm actually going to move this over to the right just a little bit here because we have some valves and whatnot that I'm going to put over here to the left. Okay, so for the blueprint here, it's relatively simple. I've done this in the past once before. Matter of fact, I've actually done it a couple of times before. And the biggest thing that I want to do is build up a nice big box for salt because salt is the most important thing that I have in this system. It's also going to be double walled because for whatever reason, salt has a tendency to actually explode walls. So by making them too thick, I reduce the risk of breaking stuff. Now there's a couple important things. Right down here, we're going to run some pipes and these are going to be made out of steel. And this is going to be in direct contact with any of that hopefully molten um, salt that we have down here so that's going to run just like this and as you can see we don't have enough materials that's why we need a lot of steel now for the obsidian that is going to run right on over here like this so with one exception we're actually going to jump in the hotline just like this okay now i'm going to bring in the hotline that's going to be right over here like that and then the cooled side will come out over here uh, for this first arrangement here all i'm going to do is focus on salt now, the reason I'm focusing on just salt right up here is because this happens at 1,470 degrees Celsius, whereas magma happens at 1,410 degrees Celsius. So the two tend to be kind of complicated when you combine them together. So matter of fact, this is the second time I'm actually setting up this arrangement here because the first time I did try to combine them together and it was a lot like I did for my rocket in my previous playthrough. However, that system just becomes unnecessarily complex. You can see how this one would be really, really simple. We're going to boil, essentially, a lot of salt, take the thermal energy out of it, and it really won't be that complicated. All right, so the neat thing about this system here is that I can do pretty much all of my automation using just a liquid element sensor right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that right here in the middle, and what I'm going to have down here on the bottom is going to be molten salt that'll be all over the place right down here and then above that i will have a layer of salt that actually 
will go from a liquid to a gas and then it'll go right back on down. To bring more and more salt into this area inside of here, I'm going to use a shipping conveyor. It's going to be made out of steel and it'll just run right around here like this. And then I'm going to use a conveyor bridge just like this to go in like that. And then I will deposit more salt into this biome. <laughs> I don't know why I'm calling it a biome. Into this machine <laughs> uh, like that. Oops, except for I want to make sure that that is made out of steel. Definitely want to make sure these are made out of steel. Otherwise, they will melt, which would not be good. Iron might be okay, just okay if I'm careful, but I don't just want to be careful. <laughs> I want to make sure that it's right. So we go in and we go out right there. Thank you, steel and steel. Okay, so for the drywall back here, this is, needs to be made out of obsidian. Nice high temperature, and it looks pretty cool when it's all black. Okay, so now that I have this liquid element sensor here, I want to be able to turn on and off the amount of uh, molten aluminum that's flowing through this. So to do that, I'm going to use a liquid shutoff valve. And again, just to be careful, I'm going to make everything here out of steel. This thing should be just fine, but I don't think we can ever be too, too safe. Okay, so that will flow in right over here and then right back out into the previous pipe up. Okay, so the automation wire that runs between here is going to tell me that, hey, if this is not molten salt, then we can disable it. We don't want to flow more molten aluminum through here. If it is, then we do want it to flow. It's that simple. All right, so now let's focus on the steam turbine up top. That's where all the power happens. So what we need up there is a door that's going to be automated. So this is going to be made out of steel. It'll be just right here in the middle. Or maybe I make it over here to the left and we try to run two of them. But for right now, I think I'm just going to run one. With the way that this is set up, only one of these metal refineries can actually be running at a time because only one of them can drain at a time. So it's not like we're really pumping way too much into this system. We can actually handle most of it with just one steam turbine. And if we have extra energy, well then it's not a big deal because it just goes into the tank and we use it later. All right, so I heard the printing pod go off here. Let's bring in our first duplicate of the new year. Ooh, decreased air consumption rate, pretty good. Balloon artist, hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, Jabe, welcome to the base. And thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. I've got a brand new gift for you. It's a snazzy suit. Let's take a look at our critters, shall we? Ooh, they seem to be doing pretty good. Got a fair amount of the slicksters down here. Ooh, got some more. We can empty that one, empty that one, empty this one, empty this one. Man, look at all those slicksters. Hey, you even got an egg in here. You guys can't keep that in there. So it looks like the slicksters are doing pretty good. What about the pips? Hmm, seem to be doing pretty good. It seems as if there is, however, a battle going on between the pips and the auto sweepers here. They're fighting over the <laughs> little acorn seeds right here. All right, so my, all right, so I've disabled that. There you go, pips. Plant away, please. Oh, that's obsidian. Ooh, they're probably not going to plant there. All right, so it'd probably be a good idea to go ahead and sweep those up and move them up here to this storage bin. So that way we can at least start to grow this area. Not only that, are we auto harvesting this stuff? Yes, we are. How about its priority? Oh, looks pretty good. Dupes. You can harvest up some of these, you know. I've managed to quiet down the shovels over here. What I did is I changed the tile to obsidian. I noticed the loudest noise is when they actually went to dig through that tile. So now they just kind of run around it. Ah, so much better. And if I select critter egg here, ha ha. Well, darn it. <laughs> Just waiting on Jabe. Where you at, dude? Oh, man. Way to find the farthest possible spot to pick up iron ore. And bring it all the way back over here. Oh. Jabe, we're going to have to work on this Atmo suit thing. But at least you got the transit tube. There you go. There you go. You'll get there. This cycle, eventually. There we go. <laughs> Anyhow, that has been slightly solved, at least for right now. Many shovels. And if they give off more eggs, then it'll be swept up and delivered right up here for hatching. Nice. All right, so focusing back on power here, let's go ahead and copy this design right here. And I can place it as far over as this spot if I really wanted it. Right there. 
Although I don't think I want to restrict myself too much. So I think I will go ahead and put it right here. I put it there. Can I put another one right next to it? I can if I really wanted to. Hey dupes, you don't need to build this. You can stop supplying it. You know what? We are going to build it right there. That way I can build another one if I really wanted to. All right, so for the next chunk of automation, I'm just going to put a thermal sensor right here, right above the door, and that's going to tell me how hot this is. So what I want is this down here to be a gas, and this up here to be below 135 degrees Celsius, based on some of my testing in the past. All right, so for the automation on this door, what I'm looking for here is when this is below 135 and this is in a gas, when both of those are true, then we will close the door. So that's what the automation looks like right here. Super simple, not a lot to it. So we take the knot of that, this little wire goes right there, and that little wire goes right there. All right, for insulation, I'm going to go ahead and use insulated Mafic right here and right over there. Why not that tile as well? Although I do want to build this door. Can we reach it before it's out of reach? Ew, that automation wire is in the wrong spot for that door. All right, so when it comes to keeping the steam turbine cool, normally I'd have some sort of piece of equipment down here, which kind of converts the energy uh, so that we take the heat out of this area down here and pump it into this area down here using an aqua tuner. Uh, now I'm just going to use a radiative tile. We'll see how that works. Maybe lead will work out just fine. I'm going to give it a try. All right, so to fill up my line and the rest of these metal refineries, once they're constructed, I'm going to need to fill them with aluminum. So therefore, I'm going to go ahead and refine a little bit more. Maybe not forever, but let's see here, 20. That should be a good 2,000 worth. Oh, we already have 2,000 right there. Let's just go ahead and sweep that up. Maybe I don't need more. Rex, how in the world did you get up there? You just jumped from here to here to here? <laughs> yep. Wow. All right. How's our oxygen situation doing? You know what? We're actually keeping up, believe it or not. I did add one more dupe, but we don't seem to be having any issues. I do have two more advanced electrolyzers that I put in over here. Mmm, so we should probably try to plumb those up. Now, how in the world are you going to fit two more electrolyzers into this same area? That's crazy. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is bring this over here like that and then connect it right here disconnect that oh yeah here we go and then jump a bridge over here like this and then jump another bridge over here like that which means this radiative tile here will then flow in right there so then that will flow out like this go up and snake through this entire area just like so haha <laughs> And that would make this nice and cold. All right, so that solves one oxygen, but how do we get the other one in there? Aha, here's what we do. So we take this, oh no, and you don't click the wrong button. Here's what we do. You flip that over here like this, and then we take this pipe here, go into that spot, get rid of this connection, and get rid of that connection right here. So then we jump that over here like this, and then in here like that, to this to that, which then means we have another oxygen line over here like this. Now, clearly we have to get this oxygen from here down to here, but also important, we also get the need to get the hydrogen out of this spot. So let's go ahead and take care of that. We can just extend this line, fairly simple, and we can use the long bridge to jump over here like this. And that way the hydrogen flows out over to the bridge and then back into the line. Perfect, right? And then this hydrogen line flows out over here like this, over here like that, down and over there. And then if I take this radiative tile, uh, pipe, we can then run the oxygen out right here, over here to the left, and then back over here to the right, and back over here to the left, to the right, to the left, just like so. Insulate that, bring that back around here like this, and boom. Just like that, we've pretty much covered every single tile here. Spaghetti perfection. Oops, we missed a spot. Right there, hold up, I can take care of that. If we put that right there, and then a bridge over here like that. Perfect. Oops. Hold up, we still got one spot right here that's missing. 
Not to worry, if we take this pipe, we bring it up, we can then move that vent right up here like that. Which means we can get rid of this pipe. Vent, we don't need that anymore. What a useless thing. Now what we've got to do is plug in the liquid pipes. Simple. And have some power. And voila, we'll have way more oxygen now. Okay. I think we've reached just about the limit of how much heat we can throw into this aluminum for right now. So we're gonna disable that. Its current temperature is at 2,100 degrees Celsius. And if I'm not mistaken, that looks like a melted obsidian pipe. <laughs> Which means, oh yes, we have some obsidian down here. Let's go ahead and deconstruct that. All right, so what I want to create down here is a loop that is constantly running and works in such a way that I can always check the temperature of what's flowing through there. So we're going to run the obsidian pipe out here over here like this. I will then use a liquid pipe thermal sensor right here. And that's going to let me know if it is hot enough or not in order to run the liquid shutoff valve. So that's going to break down here like this. Now, if it isn't hot enough, it's just going to run through here like that and then right back up into the tank. Now, if it's too cold, it's just going to run right on over here. We're going to jump it over a little bit of a liquid bridge and then that runs back up here into the tank just to recirculate. The cold line returns like this so that it has priority over this check loop right there. And then the hot line will run out right over there. However, there's one more thing I want to do right here. What I would like to create is a way to actually kind of heat up this pipe more slowly. There's a couple of good comments here talking about how we can heat up pipes. Uh, one of them was the idea that we can actually run below 1000 packets uh, through the pipe because those won't actually phase change on you so they won't become solids. The other thing is that we could use the petroleum to heat up to a certain point so that it is a little bit less of a shock to the system when you run that through there. So I'm going to do exactly that this time here for this long run of obsidian pipe. So to do that, I'm going to install a liquid valve in this spot and then run it just like this. So I can restrict this down to a thousand, which will slowly heat up everything down here so that it doesn't break uh, when we initially go to run it. All right, so in order to put more salt into this area here, I'm just going to use a loader just like this and then throw in a conveyor rail right over here. Like this. So now we can load this up salt will run through here and I'm slightly adjusting this pipe so that it's going to radiate right here as well. So this will kind of heat up the side of the diamond right there and will then hopefully melt that quickly because if you just put a block of salt inside of here, it will take forever to heat up. Even if you take like one kilogram and you drop it in this area over here, it will still take a really long time to heat up. So you have to be careful. Speaking of being careful, <laughs> disable the metal refinery. Holy moly, we're up to 2,300 degrees Celsius. Ah, a little bit more and we'd have some major issues. All right, so this means I need to re-enable steel over here because I still need more. So let's get that up and running. I'm also going to bring an anti-gel just like I've done right here. In case you're wondering, this tile right here is in a vacuum so that we don't end up uh, taking the hot from this and exposing it to the liquid. So that's how we end up with this shape right there over and over again. And then I just copy that settings to all of the. All right, so we can see the temperature right here. It's at 2,300 degrees, but what I'm going to do is introduce a fair bit more aluminum, but however, this stuff is a little bit colder. We'll see the temperature here gradually drop as more of that cooler aluminum is introduced to this tank because the tank is always averaging the temperatures that are inside of it. So you can see how that's 2,200 and it's dropping. All right, so there we have it. Ooh. Ooh, so there we have it. 3,800 kilograms of molten aluminum. Mmm, good stuff. Okay, so I'm going to make sure to set that to 1,000. It's actually really important that we set that. <laughs> nice high priority, especially before we ever enable this thing. Because otherwise, you will automatically start pushing 10 kilogram packets through here and, well, you saw how that happened in the last episode. All right, so if we can complete these tiles right there, then we should be good to go. Uh-oh, uh-oh, emergency. <laughs> this thing is shut off. Ah, priority level, please, dupes. Ah, ah, enable it. Let the liquid flow. Oh no. Um, detect none. Apparently that isn't true. 
it is technically a nun. It's in a vacuum. Hmm. Oh, this is gonna be... Darn it! It's exploding. Ah, no. No, 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 no. And cold damage the entire way around. Oh, there we go. Now we're down to 1,000 packets. We're good to go now. <laughs> I had good intentions. It didn't work out, did it? And of course, the liquid shutoff valve is now overheating. Okay, hang on. We're gonna turn that to zero. Dupes. We need to rebuild this thing because it will never cool down. <sighs> all right, so let's go ahead and get rid of all these ladders, clean it out, sweep up everything inside of there. There you go. That is looking for hopefully the right thing here, which is going to be molten salt. Molten, yes, molten salt, there we go. And this is looking for below 130 degrees Celsius. However, I'm going to keep that above right now because I don't have any water in there. All right, so how's the heat? We brought in a few degrees to these windows tiles. That, matter of fact, it's already up to 95 degrees, not bad. Okay, is it active this time? Yes, okay, good. <laughs> now let's turn this on to 1000. How's our shine bug reactor doing? Ooh, it's doing pretty good. We're up to 912 watts. We can go up to 1.25 kilowatts. So we got a little bit of ways that we can still go. That thing is putting out a fair amount of power now. You know what this room really needs? A picture frame. Because let's face it, the decor in this area is kind of abysmal. Like, it is bad. Your eyes are bleeding. Look at that. Minus 435. Actually, if you take a look at the decor of my entire base, <laughs> it's either, wow, super good, or horrifically bad. Anyhow, let's take a look at the heats here. Ooh, look at that window tile. It's taking up some heat. Matter of fact, look at the temperature of the pipes here. This is going in at 1,400 degrees Celsius and coming back at 287. Above 1,000 is good for now, but I'm actually going to increase this a fair bit once we actually go to start to really run this machine down here. Basically because I want a nice big delta between this spot and the spot down below. Now, another liquid that we could potentially run in here, as you guys mentioned in the comments, was magma. Now, magma is available on the map, obviously, because you can pick it up and pump it into a pipe. And But the one reason I'm not really using it is because its minimum temperature is 1,400 degrees Celsius, which makes it good, but not quite excellent for a working material, because I kind of need to go below this temperature every now and then. So I would say aluminum is probably my best option at the moment. And that's because its working range is a little bit better than magma here from 660 up to 2,470. So that's perfect. And if you compare the specific heat capacities, aluminum's at 0.91, whereas magma is at 0.1. So it's only 0.09 different, which really isn't that big of a difference. Although it is a fair bit more expensive <laughs> because you have to melt down a lot of aluminum that you could otherwise be using for equipment. But for those of you that were looking to do this more sandbox style, magma is an option. Let's take a look at our oxygen system here again. I have this thing running relatively cold up here, set to a temperature below 10 degrees Celsius. Doesn't look like it's actually able to keep all of these cool because it's right around four degrees Celsius. But how, what is my output temperature? It looks like we are about 12 degrees right here and about 12 degrees right there. So by the time it finds its way into the base, ooh, 21 and 27 degrees. It's a fair bit higher, which is making my base a little bit warmer, right around 38 degrees Celsius. Not only that, we're storing some stuff inside here, so I'm sure that has something to do with it. Ooh, what do we have? Slickster larva. Mm. I'll take the brine. Take that, Slickster. Gosh, look at those Slicksters. They're making a mess everywhere they go. All right, so now it's time to introduce a little bit of salt into my boiler over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on salt. That is under consumable ore, and then make sure I can select allow manual use, sweep only. We don't necessarily need it to be sweep only, but I wanna control just how much makes it in there. And then we're going to cap this off with some diamond. Make sure that that's a nice high priority, and then we'll slap a few more right there so that the melted salt will flow off to the right. Now, we've got some salt way up over here. That is 900 kilograms worth. That's 1,200 kilograms. There's another 1,200 and about another 1,200. So that's actually a pretty good amount right there. If you figure that each 800 we have is going to be one tile. 
So technically I'm going to need more than that. I think the amount of molten salt that I want down here is going to be a total of 8,000 kilograms. Oh, dupes. <laughs> you loaded it, but you didn't finish building everything we needed to build. All right, two more right here and here. <laughs> Priority level, do it. <laughs> oh, Jabe got the highest priority. Come on, Jabe, don't make me wait till 2021 to build this thing here. Thank you. Hey, good timing, Rex. We now have another metal refinery ready to run. Gold into gold amalgam. Build a good old 50 of those. Okay, so we don't need these anymore. We could just disable them. Oh, what happened here? Oh no. Explosion. <laughs> I made aluminum gas. Crap. My bad. That's some hot stuff. Oh man. I don't know what all melted, but it disappeared quickly. <laughs> oh, all the background tiles got obliterated. Look at that. They're not even there anymore. That is super hot. Oh. Some of those tiles were like 2,400. <laughs> Who's being scalded to death? Rex? What? Are you kidding me? There's nothing hot over here. You guys don't know what being scalded actually is. You were really close though. Like really, really close. Oh, why is there molten lead here? What are you doing? All right, well, I guess I have to build a bottle emptier here just to get rid of my molten lead and molten al aluminum. Yep, molten aluminum, there we go. Molten aluminum, 900. We have molten glass? No. I guess glass is another way we could potentially get a really high temperature liquid. If you take a look at glass, molten liquid glass, you see, the thing is it doesn't have a really high specific heat capacity, it's only 0.2. And it also turns into a solid at 1,100, so... Oh, everything became unplugged. I see why. Because it melted. <laughs> All right, everybody, sweep the stuff up. Yeah, that's right, pump that molten aluminum out of there. All right, who's crispy around here? Ah, Boogies and Dr. Baron. Hop on this cot here. You want to see a radiative tile, just take a look at this thing. <laughs> 615 degrees Celsius. What? Okay, so whatever you do, don't ever run this stuff too hot because it nukes everything. My bottle emptier is 655 degrees Celsius. My radiative tiles are over 600 degrees Celsius. They're, they can't, they can hardly even cool down because they're so hot for some odd reason. Even though they're giving off 25,000 DTUs per second. I feel like logic has gone out the window at this point. So just go ahead and, and deconstruct that. Rebuild it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Stop catching fire, dupes. Please. Thank you. Okay, so what's the return temperature down here? 643 degrees Celsius. Beautiful. There we go. Now we're moving some heat. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. Please don't. Darn it. We're gonna have to go in there and fix that. No. <laughs> what is with you? What is? Why are you doing this to me? What is your problem? What did I ever do to you? All right, so any moment now, we should have some molten salt flowing out of here because that's just about up to 800 degrees. And any moment now, I'm gonna sweep this stuff up. Aha, this has been reconstructed. And what do you contain? Aluminum at a nice calm 1000 degrees. Thank you. Aha, there we go. I really hope this turns into <laughs> molten salt here. Uh, I know that it interacted with the tiles in the background and that's why it turned into a solid but hopefully hopefully it heats up here Ooh, yes there we go that's what i wanted to see a little bit of molten salt down there we're well on our way Ooh, look at that look at that it's all melting rex you're the only one that keeps consistently getting cooked i don't know where you're getting crispy like it would make sense if you were getting crispy down here but dupes keep running down there all the time they're not getting crispy that's 800 degrees celsius Rex, I don't know where. Do you just have a low heat tolerance all of a sudden, Rex? Is that it? All right, so I set up a bottle emptier right here. We're going to go ahead and take a little bit of water and throw it in there. Nice big old high priority for that. All right, so this is doing exactly what I didn't want it to do. And that is just have salt right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and modify the loop here so that it does this number. That way we should be able to consistently melt some stuff right down here and hopefully in turn heat this up. 
All right, so I put 400 kilograms worth of water right here, so that's done. I'm gonna seal that off, deconstruct that. We'll replace that with a, a gas vent. So that's going to be the canister emptier. All right, good, that's what I wanted to see. Molten salt everywhere, including over this spot. So that should heat up reasonably now, and that should be able to actually fill up this area a little bit. That's currently 900 kilograms worth. So I'm going to start to bump up the temperature here a little bit. We're up to 1200 degrees Celsius now. <laughs> Look at all these dupes working in this spot. Whoa! Sorry, boogies. You're kind of stuck, dude. I'm sure somebody will come on over here and help you out. Just keep waiting, dude. Just a little longer. Hmm, everything but the tile you needed. <laughs> I know, right? You're getting kind of desperate. Aaron's, oh, don't worry. Dave's got gotcha. you. <laughs> Just traveling from the furthest possible location. I'm sorry, boogies. You're saved. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just building a little bit of a transit tube access point here so the dupes can get in. And a little power station so that they can come in here and tune up the steam turbine. If I see that there's enough opportunity here, I will add a second steam turbine. That's kind of what I'm keeping this area available for. Hmm, we'll have to see. I think my use for this area over here is pretty much just about done. I might run a little bit more aluminum in here, depending on how much is left over, but I'm pretty close to being done here. Okay, so I have a good amount of salt down here. Have we swept up the rest of it? Yeah, it looks like we swept it already. Let's see, there's gotta be a little bit more that I can sweep up. Yes, there we go. Here's tons of it. Oh, you know what? There's a little problem with the pipes here. That needs to be separated. All right, so I'm just putting the finishing touches on this right here. Adding a door, adding a light, hopefully adding a little bit of hydrogen. Enable auto bottling, yes, good stuff. That ceiling light is going to explode very quick. Well, maybe not. Man, look at all these dupes running the machines down here. All right, so I'm just bringing in a little bit more salt down here, and then pretty soon we'll be able to kind of tap into this and convert this molten salt into salt gas and then actually start to get some power out of it. So I've increased this to 1,600 degrees. That'll be kind of my final temperature. I might even go a little bit higher than that, but right now you can see I'm at 1,200. I might have to allow some of this to flow through here just to melt the rest of the salt that I'm loading into the loader here. It seems to be doing all right. But I think I can, I should be able to bring a little bit more in there. Let's make that 1200. At the moment, I'm only at 180 kilograms per tile down there. So I gotta, gotta crank that up a little bit. I'm seeing this weird thing again, where some of these solids like don't seem to be interacting with anything. See how that's 696 degrees Celsius. If I drop it, now it's temperature goes back up. Just weird things like that show up every now and then. Who knows? It's probably one of my mods messing with it. Now, just the main thing here is just to keep making more and more steel. The 1,600 kilograms. Hang on, we don't want the stoops to keep running in and out of this. You can go in, you can't go out. No! Or maybe just don't go through there. <laughs> I would like this to actually have hydrogen inside of it. Please, dupes, thank you. Just hop out right there if you can. All right, let's bring in another duplicate here. In place of bubbles. We're going to have Zek TG. Welcome to the base. Thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. Ooh, stress response. Binge eater on both of these. Whatever you do, don't get stressed out, Zek. Oh, and nobody gets to sleep here. Oh, JB is sleeping. All right, dude, that guy's a noisy sleeper. We gotta work on the housing just a little bit. Ooh, look at this power. We're up to 1.18 kilowatts in the shine bug reactor. Amazing. How are we doing on sweeping up salt? Wow, we've swept up a lot of it. Where has it all gone? <laughs> Am I mysteriously losing a lot of salt when it goes in here? Let's take a look at the consumable ores here. Salt, I have 7.6 tons. Well, hello, sweep you. How about you? Oh, I see. You dupes are just dropping it on the ground left and right because I can't enable that mod. There you go, sweep it up. Ooh, that, that's five tons. You don't need to sweep that one up. Oh, never mind. Fine, sweep it up. Did I make this sensor wrong? I might have made that sensor wrong. That might need to be a gas. If it's a gas, yes. That's it. I knew I was missing something. This sensor down here is supposed to be a gas element sensor, not a liquid element sensor. Sorry about the confusion. In case you were following this as some sort of crazy guide, 
that is actually incorrect the way it is. So we will go in there and we'll swap, swap that out. Some dupe is going to get awfully toasty in there. Rex, have you volunteered? No, you're out of there. Who's gonna do it? Oh no, Meep. Be careful, dude. How you feeling, Meep? Yeah, it's a little bit warm, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so this needs to look for salt gas. When we see salt gas and we're below 130 degrees Celsius, then that door closes. That makes sense. Yeah, much better. Hmm, <laughs> come on, ceramic. I need a little bit more of you so that we can finish off the last two refineries. Not that I really have a material to run on them, but these will run. Still trying to melt more salt. It's taking a long time. Although I did just bump the temperature up to 1500, so it hasn't actually run heat through in, in a while. That means the output temperature over here is going to be relatively high. Oh yeah, 1600 degrees. I'm also rebuilding a lot of the paths around here so that they make a little bit more sense. This will run down here like that. And over here like this, and over here like that, and then we get rid of this. And put a very important tile right down here so that nothing drops down this ladder. Man, look at how happy Zek is. That was a massive grin. I wonder if you're gonna become a sticker bomb here pretty soon. Come on, Heat. Come on, Heat. 1,300. I need more. Ooh, all right, we got a poke shell spawn. My other one died off last time, so now... Now I have one. I still don't have a plan for it though. <laughs> it's a bad sign, dude. I don't know what to do with you. You like polluted dirt. My new duplicates are just eating raw meat, are they not? Okay, awesome. At this point, I have molten salt right up here on the second level. So this is a very thin layer of molten salt that's just kind of moving around. And then down here, we have a big glob of it, 740 kilograms worth. So I've disabled loading more salt in here. And what I want to do is try to heat this stuff up hot enough now to turn into a gas. So for that, I've set this temperature relatively high. I'm actually going to go even higher than this, 1,600 degrees Celsius. So as we run the metal refineries up here, that should keep bumping up the temperature more and more. You can see that the input temperature right there, 1,700 degrees, depending on where it's coming from, it's hot. Now, as far as the automation, I think what I want to do is, because it's not detecting any gas, I want to take the knot of that, just like this, and then take that signal and bring it into here like this. This way I can get rid of this sort of hydro sensor, which was just used temporarily. Now the real question is, can we even get over there? No, nope, we can't. I'm gonna deconstruct the background buildings right here and put a liquid bottler in here so that this way I can kind of pump all the liquid out of here and store it up in little bottles. Now, I'm gonna get rid of this because I shouldn't, I shouldn't need this anymore. I already have all the aluminum I need inside of this loop, so I should be set. All right, so here we go. We're bringing in really, really hot molten aluminum, 1,600 degrees, and that heated it up a little bit. <laughs> it's got a lot of work to do, really. The thing is, once we get all of this up to temperature, it's just gonna take a little bit of energy just to put it over the edge. And then we're going to get a big windfall of energy as we try to suck that out. So, all right, so we're gonna see this a lot because I'm running these metal refineries quite a bit. So it should cycle on and off here quite frequently. The real question is just how quickly is it heating up? That's now 1,020 degrees. So I think it went up about 30 degrees. Here we go again. And the new output temperature now is 1,060 degrees. So yeah, it's, it's stepping up. It's probably gonna be about five cycles or so before we have enough heat down here to turn that into a salt gas though. All right, now I'm going to just suck up a little bit of molten lead and try to run it to the bottler. Let's see what happens when I do that. The bottler is not hot. The tile down here is kind of getting hot. Oh, and now it's empty. <laughs> well, dupes, I didn't want that to happen. <laughs> oh, okay, so now it's exploding. Real nice. Uh, empty storage, please. Ooh. Ooh, we have a royal nymph egg. I just noticed that. I was going over here to actually just put some molten lead on display, but I think we're going to put a royal nymph egg on display. Put a, pun I put a couple of critter drop-offs down here, so you can go ahead and wrangle these guys up. 
they have nothing else to do. Mmm, <laughs> my long hair slicksters are having a hard time because there's too much hydrogen around. Their neighbors are fogging them out. Aha, we can now mop it. Excellent. Now we're talking. And the only thing I want now. Okay, so now that we've mopped up all that molten metal, we're gonna do this number here, go over here, and just say molten aluminum. And then you are going to look for molten aluminum. Everything else is complete. So we can just deconstruct it. All right, so I'm done with everything over here. I might deconstruct it in a moment, but for right now, I think I'm just gonna leave it just in case I need it. Over here, I've got a fair amount of molten aluminum ready to go, so that's good. It's currently moving a lot of heat into side of into here. We're up to 1,343 degrees. So it's got a little bit more to go before it actually turns into a gas. All right, you can see I'm up to 8.5 tons of steel. That's a good start. I am going to be building a fair amount of rockets. So I'm going to need a lot of steel. This is two tons. <laughs> so there's going to be no shortage of steel that I need. So might as well just make as much of it as I can right now. As far as iron is concerned, yes, we could use lots and lots of iron. Don't need any more aluminum, so we'll be done with that. Ooh, just a couple more runs here and this molten salt will turn into a gas. And then we'll start to see some power. Ooh, ooh, there we go. Now we're starting to see some salt gas. Beautiful. Ooh, yes, yes. And you can see just how quickly it's flashing right up here at the top. It's because that liquid pipe is running through there and it's just kind of scraping off the top of that molten salt. Beautiful. Oh, oh, there we go. Now it's running for the first time here. Look at all this heat shoot through here, up into the water, into the steam. Boom, just like that. Now our steam up here is just about 110 degrees Celsius. It will kind of even out here in a moment as it starts to run. But this set is set up in such a way that it should be, it should run up to about 750 watts. You can kind of control just how hot the steam gets by setting the minimum temperature right here. This whole thing kind of pulses, right? You get a bunch of heat down here, then we bring in a bunch up here. That then gets sent out as power and then it flicks back over a bunch of times. All right, so what we should see here is we're going to get a little bit of salt gas as this next wave of heat moves in here. Once this thing clicks on over, there we go. We now detect that there's gas and this goes below 130. Therefore, we brought in a bunch of heat. The temperature up here will increase. Currently at 150 degrees Celsius. That climbs up just a few more degrees from there. And then this proceeds to cool off just a little bit. And the salt gas cools down into a vacuum. We bring in more molten aluminum which is then going to flash it back into a gas so we get a bunch more energy. Ha ha, ha ha, boom. There we go again. Isn't that cool? All right, I'm going to bring this up to 140. That should allow us to run this a little bit hotter. Okay, we don't need to run this anymore. <laughs> We've got more than enough hydrogen in here. Three kilograms worth. And that seems to be keeping the steam turbine plenty cool. It's at 39 degrees. Now, my only concern right now is that I might be building up too much heat. We're at 1,900 degrees Celsius, <laughs> which is a little bit hotter than what I have set over here, which means I might need that second steam turbine. Or it means I have to run this a little bit hotter because that is currently only converting 600 watts. All right, let's see if I can tune this thing up to get a little bit more power out of it. I've set this to be kind of really high, so somebody should be coming on over here to tune it. I've disabled steel manufacturing for just right now because I think I'm just building up too much heat. I'm a little worried that I'm actually going to kind of explode the pipes again, but we'll re-enable it here. I think one thing I will want to do is possibly just build a second steam turbine over here just to make sure that I'm always removing enough energy to where I don't end up building up more than I can actually remove, which I think is possibly right where I'm at right now. I do keep bringing up the temperature here, so that's making a difference. I mean, you can see the output temperature here, 2,130. It's not real close to 2,400, but it's enough to kind of make me, kind of make me worry a little bit. And the heat keeps going up. <laughs> Run faster, turbine. Come on, numbers. Stop making more chips and tune it. <laughs> this is like terrifying. Oh man. 
2180 degrees. Mm. <laughs> I have too much heat. Run faster, turbine. Well, look at this power. Ooh. 1.1 kilowatts. Are you, what? I now have that plus 1.16 kilowatts right here. I'm sorry, generators. I'm glad I spent many hours on you, but now I don't need you. <laughs> Who has lots of power? I have lots of power. Dupes, what did you do to my base? Oh no. You let an ethanol slickster loose. Murder it with vengeance. Oh, it's making a mess. This is like a sick joke, isn't it? Look at that. All right, so that's a little bit too hot. <laughs> All right, so I think that confirms it right there. I need to have two steam turbines. And I'm more than okay with that. Yet I'm over three hours into this recording thus far, so I think that's going to be it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. Happy New Year. And if this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. As always, stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar, out.